Okay, now that we have our piece of meat all broken down into its one inch, half inch, and one and a half inch steaks, and then our short ribs, what we're gonna do is marinate now. Um, I have a classic marinade, soy, Worcestershire, coarse ground pepper, garlic and onion. You know, that's just a classic, I mean, just absolute classic marinade um, for just those really nice flares, the Worcestershire um, and the soy, garlic, and, and coarse ground pepper. Now my daughter doesn't like steak as spicy as say my wife and I, so I'm gonna do hers in a separate bag where I do just the classic, you know, with the soy, the Worcestershire, coarse ground pepper, the onion and the garlic. But for the wife and I, Red Devil. God, I love this stuff. Um, and it has nice vinegar in it. Uh, vinegar helps, you know, the meat break down just as it helps to marinate, helps to break down your stomach. It's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing in general to have some kind of vinegar in your marinade um, just to help the digestion process as well as it taste good. God, I love, I love vinegar-based marinades personally. So let's get into this. You guys, I wish I could tell you that I could sit here and say, oh yeah, you need a tablespoon of this, you need a half a tablespoon of that. My grandmother didn't teach me that. She says, son, go pull eggs, um, bacon, you know, whatever out of the refrigerator and then let's create something. Uh, so we, we always, you know, you just make a judgment call um, as far as how much meat you're trying to cover um, with as much flavor, which as much flavor as you need. Um, if you run too much soy, you know, it's going to be saltier. If you run, say, too much Red Devil, then it's going to have too much vinegary taste to it. you got to kind of balance it. And like I always teach my daughter now how to cook, you know, taste every single thing you make. Every single thing you make needs to be tasted. You need to know what garlic tastes like raw and onion and all these things. So you know how to meld these flavors together. That is a holistic way to look at it. You really got to, you know, be proud of the flavors that you're putting on this expensive piece of meat that you're going to be serving to somebody else and know exactly what it tastes like and know how to melt these flavors correctly. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I like to start personally. We're going to do a little Worcestershire here. Let's make sure this baby's open. Oh, we haven't even opened this thing yet. Let's crack this thing open for the first time. That sounds great. Voila, a little Worcestershire. My dad taught me this. This is one. Of, this is one of the marinades that my dad used years and years ago, um, and I've been using it ever since. You know, just a generous amount. You're going to be putting a pound and a half of meat in here. So I'm going to do. I don't know. Maybe a half a cup. Half a cup, give or take a little bit. Now a little soy. I'm not going to do quite as much soy. Good, good shake of garlic in here. You know, I mean, if you really want to put a, maybe a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half. Remember, this garlic is just going on the outside, so it's not going to get a chance to truly penetrate, so it really doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but it, it doesn't matter as much how much you put in there. Um, you just want to get a good, generous amount. Um, so as much, as much that's going to stick to the meat will. Um, same with the onion. Just a nice, nice shake. You know, maybe a tablespoon. Um, and then our coarse ground pepper. I always like to use coarse ground pepper when I'm marinating because that pepper is going to break down a little bit and it's not going to be as hearty or as strong, you know, when it's all said and done. Uh, just a neat, little, nice little shake. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, sorry. Shake your booty. Oh. <laughs> Voila, just like that. So, and I, like I said, the one inch the, or the half inch steaks are going to be for my kid. Um, hold on a second here. Let's just, you know, let's shake this up a little bit. I forgot. I apologize. That's why I love Ziploc bags. Oh, my favorite. Get all that stuff shook up in there just nice. And then we'll seal it, you know, and you could seal it in this vinegar salt based marinade. I mean, it can sit in this stuff two weeks, you guys. Two weeks you could leave your meat in this, in this marinade. Um, and it, I mean, it's going to get more and more flavorful. It might be a little more salty towards the end because that salt really resonates um, as everything else starts to break down. Um, 
There you go. Let's slap these half inch steaks in here. Let's go ahead and zip tie this up or uh, zip this thing up again. And let's give them a shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your rib eye. Shake your rib eye. Now open that up a little bit. Let's take a little of the air out of there. Remember meat and air, not good. Especially when you're trying to store it. In this situation, when you're just trying to let your meat warm up and uh, come up to room temperature so that you can throw it on the grill, no problem whatsoever. Even this pre-cutting situation where you're marinating, you know, letting that, that meat come up to room temperature, you're gonna put it in these bags and man, as, as it starts cooling down, you put it back in the refrigerator, those grains are gonna tighten back up and it's gonna push that marinade right into the freaking meat just like you want it so that really the flavors really come out. Um, bacteria are amazing things. Um, in so many different ways, bacteria helps age us or age the meat. Um, it helps break down those grains and it really makes it a good eating experience when you can introduce just a little bit of bacteria but not too much, of course. Um, there you go, man right there those are two half inch ribeyes in my soy Worcestershire coarse ground pepper garlic and onion marinade stick those in the fridge all right let's repeat this time we're gonna do a little more um, we're gonna do a little more because we're gonna add the red devil to it because both of these are gonna be for my wife and I now, you know, in all reality, I should have thrown one of these ribs in with that because my daughter's most likely going to get one of these ribs, too. That's okay. I'm going to do these ribs individually. Um, well, there we go. We'll start with the soy this time. Not too much. So you don't want to over-salt it. There's, you know, there's no more salts. These are garlic powders, you know, onion powder. So no more salts. I think there's a little bit of soy in the, in the Worcestershire. Um, there's no soy in this whatsoever. You know, me personally, when I marinate, pop the top off this thing. And that thing does come off. All you gotta do is just pop it off. Um, then you can just pour. And I'm gonna be generous with this because I love the Red Devil. Now we'll add the Worcestershire to it. Pretty good amount. Now there's going to be a little more steak in here. Go with just a little more soy. See, sometimes it's just a little this, a little that. You know, that's how my grandmother taught me how to cook. And that's how I've been teaching my kid how to cook. Because you just never know when maybe you don't have the exact ingredients that you need. And you got to just fudge it just a little bit. You know, substitute something. That's why I always say you need to know how your food tastes. How the spices and things that your food, that you're putting on your food, taste before you ever do it. So that you can meld those flavors together and make a, um, a wonderful marinade on your own. You know, you pay for a jar of marinade, you're only going to get you know, a bottle this size. And it's going to cost you what, eight bucks for an actual bottle of marinade. When you can have all these ingredients that you're going to use each and every day in your in your daily cooking, you know, garlic, onion, pepper, these are things that you use all the time. Um, and you're going to create marinades. You're going to create a, a nice, expensive tasting marinade for, I would say, a budget price. Some more garlic, more onion. Put the garlic on before. Now we're doing the onion. Okay, remember this is gonna, we're gonna put all this meat in there and then we're gonna do the ribs and, by themselves. And so this, in this one, I'm gonna open up this side a little bit. Probably do a tablespoon of pepper in here. And hey guys, I'm gonna throw just a little more Red Devil. And then maybe just a little more Worcestershire just in case. So I start thinking about putting five steaks in this bag. And I think we're going to need just a tad bit more. There we go. Now you can take a marinade like this and, uh, wow, there's so many different ways you can change it. Um, 
You could put a little, uh, put a little mustard in it. You know, you could add a little barbecue sauce to it to give it a little tang of your favorite barbecue sauce. Um, a little brown sugar if you wanted it sweeter. I tell you, the mustard and the brown sugar together would give it a nice sweet vinegary flavor to it. Um, just so many ways to take it, just a base marinade like this and just change it just slightly, you know, if you like mango, if you like, you know, whatever you can find, you know, really, that you like personally. God, I, I make most all my flavors that I like on my meat because I know what I want, you know, and how do I know what that, that jarred marinade is going to taste like at the store? I'm just not sure about that. And how many jarred marinades have you had that weren't that good? A ton. Anyway, so... I believe in making my own stuff. I like making my own stuff because it's easy. It's not too much extra time and you know it's going to be exactly what you want. All right. Oh yeah. God, it's going to be so good. I cannot wait to eat these steaks. Mm. Oh yeah. We go. Now I remember I'm not taking the air out yet because I really want to uh, get this meat fully coated. And if you take the air out of it, well then the meat doesn't move around in there as well as it should and as easily as it should. Be careful, I have busted the tops of these things. It happens. And then all of a sudden you got a lap full of a nasty sticky marinade, unfortunately. And uh, steaks that you gotta remarinate again. Beautiful thing. Just like that. Now let's open this bag back up. Get that air out of there. And reseal this bad boy. Oh. Mmm. 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 Two weeks it can sit in these bags, you guys. Um, that's, well, at least two, two and a half meals. Hers, you know. Add the ribs in there, you're talking three, four meals out of this easily. In the refrigerator it goes, because I'm not cooking it tonight. All right, let's marinate up these ribs and then we're done. You're done with me, and I hope you've enjoyed this time. Please, you guys, like and subscribe. That's what makes it all go around. I would love to continue to do these things for you. You know, right now on my channel, I'm just kind of, you know, these are all things that I enjoy. This is stuff that I like doing. This is my own profession that I do. Um, and I'm just trying to bring some things to you, you know, some things that I know that maybe you don't know or, or um, just educational in general. You know, life is a journey and you never quit learning. And I'm going to learn till the day I'm not here anymore. You know, and I'm going to continue to want to try to help people learn. One thing is I've learned as I've gotten older that... Man, our youngsters just don't even know what they don't know. The internet can't show them everything. Well, it can, but <laughs> unfortunately. But we can also influence how our young people, you know, do things, um, how they adapt to these different systems and all that. So I, I feel very strongly about preparing my own stuff, doing things on my own, um, and not just totally buying into the fact that other people that I have to survive off of other people and what they do. I would like to know that I, myself, can do these things. And it tastes just as good as the restaurant or just as good as the grocery store would prepare it. Or Chuck, Chuck's, big, Chuck's Butcher Shop down the street or, you know, what, whatever the situation might be that's trying to charge you an exorbitant amount of money for something that doesn't take that much more time to produce. Again, you know, the Red Devil. You know, I was kind of light on soy, but we'll double up on the Worcestershire a little bit, and then we'll make sure and get a nice amount of the dry stuff in here. Probably a half a tablespoon in this situation, not quite as much meat, not quite as much garlic or onion, sorry, just a little. A little less garlic. Oh, yeah, ribs in the bag. 
guy. We're gonna have steak every single night. I'm gonna be super stoked about it. <laughs> um. My next, like I was telling you guys, you know, please like and subscribe on my next video. I'm gonna show you how to go to the grocery store, buy a chuck roast from the end, because they still, as much as they produce chuck eyes and chuck steaks and blade ribs and boneless blade ribs from your chuck roast, as they merchandise that piece of meat and try to take that out of your hands um, and charge you more for those pieces of meat, they still cannot produce all of those blade ends with the chuck eye. And I tell you, the chuck eye is a phenomenal piece of meat. And on my next video, when it comes to meat, I'm gonna show you how to take that piece of meat off of the chuck and produce some nice country style ribs, some nice, and some nice chuck eye steaks. Um, and you'll be, I think you'll, you'll love these. Once you buy these, and if you're a ribeye fan like I am, or a fat fan, you know, which um, the chuck eye has quite a bit of fat to it because it's from the chuck. That's what makes the chuck so nice. That's what makes the pork shoulder so nice. These are the same type piece of meat. Remember you guys, bone structure is bone structure. Hog, cow, deer, elk, doesn't matter. It's all the same. Um, you can find a shoulder off a of pork, you can find a shoulder off an elk, and a shoulder off of uh, a cow, shoulder off a of bison. It's the same piece of meat, same style bone structure. Minimal differences. Um, and you know, when you're dealing with shoulder meat in particular, that is going to be some of, some of the most flavorful, fatty, and best meats, in my opinion. Now, if you're, of course, if you're a lean person and you want to be on the lean side, well, then you're on the back end of the cow, unfortunately the butt end and you're dealing with the rounds and things like that and the sirloins and uh, you know the short loin with your New York strip and, and those sorts of things but um, I don't think the New York strip holds a candle to the ribeye ever as long as you like the tastiness of the fat that you're eating um, man there you go three short ribs marinated up in my classic marinade you guys Thanks again for spending some time with me. My name is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk. Please like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. It's what makes it all go around. And hey, I can't wait to spend some time with you next time. Peace.